Welcome back to Genetics on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the law of segregation, which is one of Mendel's laws, and how it relates to Punnett squares or monohybrid crosses. And then we're going to do a simple example of the monohybrid cross or Punnett square. And here's kind of what the law of segregation says. All right, the law of segregation says that, so the law of segregation says that during gamete formation, the alleles for each gene segregate from each other so that each gamete carries only one allele for each gene. All right, that's a tongue twister. What does that mean in layman's terms? All right, so let's consider this example. We've got our male here, which produces sperm cells. We've got our female here, which produces eggs. All right, now we know hopefully by this point that each chromosome is going to be present in two copies in every somatic cell of these individuals. So this woman, let's just say this is chromosome one. I don't know. These are both chromosome one. There's two copies of chromosome one. There's two copies of chromosome two, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Just like that, the male has two copies of chromosome one. And let's just consider one gene on that chromosome. Here's, here's a gene on the long arm of chromosome one, okay? And here's the same corresponding gene on the other chromosome one. And the same is true for the male, okay? They have two copies of the same gene, but these, let's consider for a moment, are different alleles of that gene, okay? And let's say for the sake of this argument, they both have different alleles. So the woman on one chromosome has the red allele for that gene, but she also on the other chromosome one has the blue allele. And for this example, we're going to say the same is true of the man. He has on one chromosome the blue allele, on the other corresponding chromosome one, the red allele. Now here is really what the law of segregation is, okay? When this woman undergoes oogenesis, which is when she makes her eggs, her gametes, okay, the gametes, do you really know which one of these chromosomes is going to be present here, meaning which one of these alleles is going to go into the egg? Is it going to be the red allele or the blue allele? And the fact is, you can't tell, okay? Because some of her eggs are going to have the red allele, that chromosome one, but then other ones, other eggs, are going to have the blue allele. And you can't really tell, okay? And that's because the alleles for each gene segregate and so the resulting gametes can have either allele, okay? And the same thing's true of this man's sperm cells. We don't know whether the blue allele is going to be there or the red allele. And that's pretty much the law of segregation at work. And so what we can do is we can use a monohybrid hybrid cross, also known as a Punnett square, to predict what genotypes the possible offspring will have, and we can also use that data to figure out the possible phenotypes, okay? So we're gonna consider this maternal. Uh, she has, she's a heterozygote, meaning she has big A and little a. And the paternal, he's also a heterozygote, big A and little a. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a Punnett square. Punnett squares look a lot like this. Um, it actually doesn't matter when you do this if you wanna put the maternal on top, paternal on the side, or you can flip them and put paternal up here. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to use maternal on the top and paternal over here on the side. And so what we do is we look at their genotypes and we put them as such like this in a, in a square with four little squares like this. Okay, so maternal is big A, little a. So I put the big A right here and the little a right here. For the paternal, he's also a heterozygote, big A, little a. So I put the big A right here and the little a down here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill out each one of these four cells in this cross by looking at which column they're in and which row they're in, which letters they correspond to. So in this first cell, this corresponds to big A from here and big A from here. So it's gonna be big A, big A. And in this case, this would be homozygous dominant because we typically assume that the capital letter is the dominant allele. And so he has two dominant alleles, so he's homozygous dominant. That's what this offspring would be, homozygous dominant. If we look at the second cell over here, it gets the big A from the, from the dad and the little a from the mom. And so we have big A, little a. This is a heterozygote because one of them is capital letter, one of them is lowercase letter, okay? Now, it'll turn out that when we actually look at the phenotypes, what they actually look like, what the, what's expressed, 
the heterozygote is going to look the same as a homozygous dominant, but we'll get to that later. In this third cell down here, we have the maternal big A and the paternal little a. And so we also have another case of big A little a. So this is this offspring would be a heterozygote in terms of this A gene. And then over here in the fourth cell, we get the little a from both the maternal and the paternal. Okay, so for us, for both from the mom and the dad. And so this is going to be little a, little a. And since they're both the same, but they're the recessive allele, the little, the lowercase letter is going to be the recessive allele, we would call this homozygous recessive. Okay? All right. So now what we can do is we can figure out the ratio of the genotypes. All right? And so what we're looking for are unique genotypes. So, for example, big A, little a, this heterozygote, has one exactly like it. It has to be exactly. And it's this one down here in the third cell. So I could say there's two heterozygotes. But this big A, big A, this homozygous dominant offspring for A, this is the only one like it in this Punnett square. All right. So hopefully you understand what's a unique genotype. And so typically what we do is we start with the homozygous dominance. It doesn't have to be this way, although normally it's done. And how many homozygous dominants are there? Well, there's only one with big A, big A, so I'm just going to put a 1. There's only one homozygous dominant. Then what's typical is to put the heterozygotes next. So how many heterozygotes are there? There's only two with big A, little a. One here in cell 2, one down here in cell 3. So there's two heterozygotes. And then we usually end with homozygous recessives. So little a, little a. And how many of those are there? There's just one. So our genotypic ratio in this case is going to be 1 to 2 to 1. What this means typically is we have one homozygous dominant offspring, one heterozygote offspring, and one homozygous recessive offspring. All right? And the reason, the reason that we um, have a situation like this is because of the fact that these alleles from each of these chromosome 1s, it's more or less random which one gets put in an egg and then also which egg gets fertilized, okay? And so it's going to be a matter of chance as to which allele is going to go to the egg and which allele gets donated by the sperm. And so we have to look at it from a probability point of view. And what we can also ask are the following questions. What's the probability that the offspring is going to be homozygous dominant? Well, how many are homozygous dominant? Well, just one, and what's the total? Well, there's four cases here. So if I wanted to say out of four offspring, how many are gonna be homozygous dominant? One out of four, or 25% will be homozygous dominant. And actually, the same percentage would be true if I asked, what's the percentage of offspring that will be homozygous recessive? Only one homozygous recessive offspring out of four potential offspring, so, 25% of these are going to be homozygous recessive. But if I asked what percentage of the offspring would be heterozygotes, two heterozygotes out of four potential offspring. So two out of four is one half, or 50% will be heterozygotes. Now that's a little bit of analysis of the genotypes. Let's look at the phenotypes. Now, in general, unless you're told otherwise, what you're to assume is that the heterozygotes will express or look the same as homozygous dominant, okay? There is an exception to that, and that's if you're told there's codominance. We'll talk about that much later. Don't worry about that. Unless you're told otherwise, you're to assume heterozygotes behave or look the same, have the same phenotype as homozygous dominant. All right, so we're, when we're analyzing phenotype, we have to pick a trait. So let's say the A gene, let's say it's really simplistic, codes for height. Big A would be a tall allele, and small A would be a short allele. So What's this individual homozygous dominant? What's their phenotype? Well, I mentioned the big A allele. That was for being tall. So they have two of those, so they're obviously tall. Okay. In fact, I can even put that in here. Let me just copy and paste. Tall. Okay. What about the heterozygotes? Well, remember, heterozygotes are really going to behave the same or look the same or have the same phenotype as the homozygous dominant. And the reason is because you could sort of think of it as this bigger A is going to uh, more or less 
shield them from the effects of the small a. You could think of it that way. And so they're going to have the phenotype of the, of the dominant allele, which is in this case is big A. So heterozygotes are also going to be tall. Okay, They're going to have the same phenotype as the homozygous dominant offspring. But what about little a, little a? Well, their phenotype is going to be short because the recessive allele, which they have two of them, the recessive allele is for being short. So let's go ahead and move this over here and type short. All right, so now for analyzing the phenotype phenotypic ratio, we look at the number of unique phenotypes. And in this case, there are three talls. Okay, so for the phenotypic ratio, let's put three. And then there's only one short, that's a unique phenotype, only one of those, so one. And so we can say our phenotypic ratio for tall to short is going to be three to one. And what if I ask this question, what's the probability that the offspring will be tall? Well, how many phenotypes are tall? Well, three of them are tall out of a total of four. So three-fourths of them will be tall, or 75%. I could also ask what percentage of the offspring will be short. And, well, one is short out of a total of four. So one-fourth or 25% of the offspring will be short. All right. Now, one thing I will mention is when you put these ratios, usually you're, it's either given to you or you have to indicate what the one is, what the two is, what the one is. Okay. So you would say the ratio of homozygous dominant to heterozygote to homozygous recessive is one to two to one. Because otherwise you don't know what the numbers correspond to, although typically the order is homozygous dominant, heterozygote, homozygous recessive. And the same thing's true of the phenotype. You do need to indicate that it's the ratio of tall to short being three to one. If you flipped it and said it's the ratio of short to tall, it would be one to three. Okay, so make sure you're specific on what phenotype or what genotype you're referring to. But that's how, that's how you actually do a Punnett square, also called a monohybrid cross. And hopefully you understand a little bit of how the law of segregation plays into that. Because the alleles of each of these genes on each of these chromosomes are going to segregate independently. And so the resulting gamete... This chromosome one may have the red allele or it may have the blue allele. We don't know, it's pretty much random and by chance, all right? And so with these monohybrid crosses, you're really just looking at the probability that a given offspring will have a particular genotype or phenotype, all right? So hopefully you learned a lot in this video. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.